I've always been one for high-end laptops because of the superior build quality, features, and specifications. But that changed recently, and I bought a $250 laptop. Why is that? Let's take a look and see what changed. So what really changed um, is nothing. I do prefer the high-end laptops, but I was looking for something just for your basic web browsing, email, um, watching video, although this one has a little bit of problems with it. And yeah, I just wanted a general everyday use laptop and the build quality wasn't a main feature for me because this was designed to be a cheap laptop that I can take anywhere, I can give to anyone to use and not worry about it. I can have someone use it to send off emails that works for me or whatever I need it to be. I needed a versatile laptop for everyday use. The price of this laptop was cheaper than I was hoping for, which was really nice to see. Although I did make some serious sacrifices by choosing this, and by the time I decided it wasn't perfect for what I wanted, I couldn't return it anymore. So I did have to take that into consideration. The battery life is subpar to say the least. I have to charge it at least every three to four hours depending on what I'm doing. And if I'm watching video, it can be as little as an hour and a half of video. The reason for this is that the CPU is not very strong, but it still has a decent uh, TDP and power draw. This means that it's running at a really high percent usage, so it's reaching the top of its power draw very frequently to watch video. And just your general uh, web browsing and that can easily take up 50% CPU. Yeah, 50%. That tells you how bad it is. So the box, the website, and no one in the store can tell me what the real specs of this laptop were. So I was taking a major gamble when I bought it for $250. And the thing was, you couldn't return it past seven days. So by the time I got it, I tested it, and I figured out it's not what I want, couldn't return it. Now on the box, it says it was an AMD processor. It had four gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive. That's it. That's all it said about it. So, well... It was a good deal for the basics of what I want to do. It the one part where or the two parts where it really does not meet what I wanted was the battery life and uh, the video. It has a really hard time watching video. Like I have to put it in 480p, which isn't a huge deal because the screen's only a 720p. Actually, it's a little bit greater than 720p. I think it's. 798p, 792p, something like that. Speaking of the screen panel, it happens to be a TN panel with some of the worst TN panel viewing angles and color reproduction that I have ever seen in my life. I've seen some bad panels, but this just takes the fucking cake. Like, it's terrible. I really did not like the panel. Um, you have to be looking. There's probably a three degree up or three degree down from dead on that it looks okay. The colors are still washed out. The viewing angles are absolutely terrible. And it just is not a good screen and it's barely usable. Um, like if I want to have someone come over my shoulder and look at what I'm doing uh, so I can show them something, I have to readjust the screen and then move my head or they have to bring their head down and right next to mine at the same level, which, as you, everyone kind of agrees, that's a little weird, especially in North America. I think in Europe, something different about they like being close to each other and whatever. But here, that's a little weird. You don't want to just have your head like right here next to someone. So would I recommend buying a $250 computer? Yes and no at the same time. Well, it's that way for most products, but especially for this one. If you just want to browse the web, you want to watch YouTube videos in 480p or less, you want to take and respond to emails, check your Facebook, all that kind of browsing the web stuff. If you want to do word processing, it's great for that. Um, you can have multiple documents open. 
if you are not someone that uses a lot of tabs, because there is no way to upgrade the RAM in this model, and 4 gigabytes does not go far nowadays, and you're not intending to run any intensive processes. If you can get away with a very, very basic two-core system, which is what I believe this is, uh, by looking at the specs, then this might be the laptop, or this might be the category of laptop that you should look into. But if you're looking for just this, and the functionality that this provides, you might want to take a look into a Chromebook. Sure, you have to do everything in the browser, you can't use your Microsoft Word, but you have Google Docs, and when you download that, you're downloading right into um, uh, Microsoft Word format. Or when you download itself, or a, download a Google Sheet spreadsheet, you download it to an Excel format. So you're getting the ability to do it that way and transfer it onto your main desktop or whatever, or send it off to someone else. So, well, the $250 laptops are great. They also have major downfalls. The build quality, the battery life suffers, the specs seriously suffer. The screen is worse than average, but I guess it's usable considering I can see what's on it, but it's just not great. So, if you like this video and other type of videos that I do, remember to subscribe down below, leave a like on this video, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below, and I'll talk to you in the next one.